every once in a while a cheap property comes on the market and it just ticks way more boxes than the others do. This little series that I'm starting today is called The Perfect Cheap Irish House. And basically what it's going to show you guys is that there is stuff out there that you can get for under 100,000 that you can move into, that you don't need to spend a lot of money on, you don't need to do a huge amount of work on, and you get a lot of bang for your book. So let's get started. <laughs> so all the houses in this little series only get in if they tick three boxes. First off, they have to be habitable and not just habitable for me where I would live in literally anything, but they need to be the kind of house that you can move into. You can have basic services, have some form of heating, maybe have children there from the very first week you move in. This is a really, really important thing. And it's one of those things that can be a deal breaker if your budget is quite small. The second piece of criteria that I'm looking for is land. I love a country house that has some sort of outside space. I hate the ones that you don't even have room to put an oil tank or a septic tank out the back. So definitely land is a big criteria. And last but not least, it has to be good value. I don't want to be showing you guys properties that cost 40,000 euro, have 50 acres with them, let's say, but you can't get into it because there's a right away that you don't own or something and it's like blocking the entrance into the land. It's really important that the property has to kind of pan out on a basic level when it comes to value for money for you guys. So are you ready to see my very first perfect cheap Irish house? Come on. So this is her. She's 79,000 euro in County Sligo, which is up in the northwest of Ireland, if you're not familiar with the layout of the country. It's a coastal county, which is great. So even if the property is not beside the coast, even living in a coastal county and knowing you're maybe 40 minutes or a little bit more of a drive from the beach is still a really, really nice thing. I can say that because I've lived in Wexford and I now live in a totally landlocked county in Tipperary. And you know, having the beach within driving distance is a nice thing. It's a nice plus to have definitely when you're picking a county to buy your first home in. <laughs> so before we get into the nitty gritty of this house, let's take a quick look at the outside. Now, first of all, it's big. It has this kind of vibe to the front of it that reminds me a lot of traditional farmhouses, especially ones you find in Munster a lot. That very common layout where it has the door in the middle, it has the two windows either side and the stairs comes right up from the door when you walk in through the front door. Now, this house is so reminiscent of an old traditional farmhouse that there is a chance that probably underneath all of the modern additions that it might actually be one. One thing that makes this place look a little bit less like a traditional farmhouse is the width of the windows. I think it's really the only thing that's throwing off the look of it. And I think if we can maybe look past that a little bit, we'll see that in underneath these modern additions, there is actually probably an older house. Now, these wider windows were quite common to add back in the 80s. It's just one of those things that, you know, as stuff progressed and PVC windows and all started becoming more popular, that people just widened their windows to make the houses look a little bit more modern and kind of to keep up with the Joneses a little bit, which is totally fine. But if you look at this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay just a little sketch of narrower, more traditional style windows over the wider windows. And if I now fill in the space on either side of those little sketches with the same colour as the wall, you can see that by narrowing these windows, this house could very easily come back to being a very fine traditional farmhouse like it probably once was. Now, for me, even seeing this with the yellow kind of painted in and the little narrow windows, that house is like a dream to me. And if the only thing you had to do was save up and maybe narrow the windows down a little bit again, it wouldn't be the biggest job. It's a lot harder to make a window bigger than it is to make it smaller. So the fact that these are quite wide windows with quite wide heads above them at the moment would mean that all you need to do is get smaller windows made and just get a block layer to build up the sides of the windows and make them back into the original size they used to be. And just look at that. I'm going to put it back up again for a minute just so you can see how amazing of an old farmhouse that actually could be just by doing something as small as changing the size of the windows. Now, before we talk about anything else, I just want to do a quick 
visual on the back of the house so you can see something else that was quite a surprise to me as well. If you look at the size of the two-story extension that's on the back of this place, I mean, this was a big house to start with. The extension is also quite big. It's two-story. There's no flat roof there, so there's a bit of a chance that it's going to be in better condition than the flat-roofed ones that don't really last that long. But this is a fine house. I mean, even without going inside, for the price this is selling for, this is actually a fine big house with a big extension and it has so much potential. And don't even get me started on the rest of the stuff that made me fall in love with it. <laughs> so is it habitable inside? Well, that is the $50 million question, isn't it? If you look at the pictures I'm going to put up now, you're going to see that the little living rooms downstairs are beautiful. I mean, this is like a little doll's house inside from the furniture to the carpets to the fireplaces. This place is well mined. Did. It looks like it was someone's pride and joy for a lot of years. And this is the kind of thing that I love seeing in cheap houses. So if you look even at things like the upstairs landing, which I'm going to show you, the bedrooms, even that little kitchen. I mean, sure, it's not the Rolls Royce of kitchens, but it's a small back kitchen. It has a sink in it. It has things like a fridge and all. And even if the fridge isn't there when you get the place, you know you can easily slot in the fridge that you have now. And you have a little kitchen to make do and to get dinners cooked and to get stuff going in the house. So all in all... That kind of vibe I love in the place. I think it's really dry, really clean. I mean, it has a couple of little things. If you look at the pictures in a little bit more detail on the agent's listing, which I will link from below, there is little things that need to be done, but this is not huge stuff. I mean, this house, you could easily get in, air it out, give it a clean, give it a dust, get your own duvets on your beds and you can get your own beds if the furniture isn't left there. And it's a really, really fine house. So another big thing when it comes to being habitable for me has to be this. I know, I saw it and I was like, it's a loo. Delighted. So if you look at the next picture, you'll see it in a little bit more detail. This is a fully functioning family bathroom. There's not even really any point talking about this in a lot of detail. It's exactly what I like to see on houses under 100,000 and just thank God that it's there. Now, after that, the other things that I noticed in the pictures was if you look, you can see that there's a lot of fireplaces. I mean, from the downstairs living rooms to the upstairs bedrooms, there are fireplaces kind of everywhere. And even in the kitchen where you have that little insert fireplace, if you actually look behind that, I'll put up a picture now, you can see that there does look to be a kind of a chimney there and when you have a chimney in a kitchen, the one thing that screams out to me is Rayburn, put a solid fuel cooker in, bake bread in your gingham pinny and be all of the stereotypical things that country girls and country guys are and just enjoy it. I mean, having a fireplace in your kitchen, you can even see behind me, I have an open fire in my kitchen. I wouldn't be without it. There is nothing as cozy as it on a winter's morning. It's just the nicest thing. So definitely the fireplaces are a huge thing for me. Lots of them there. Decide which ones you want to keep. Decide which ones you want to close up, but definitely having the option of them is a great thing. Now, on that note, have you seen the radiators in the pictures? Now, I don't know where the heating is coming from. They haven't said in the listing where it's coming from, but when I see radiators like these in pictures, I know that there was central heating in the house at some stage. So it could be running off of one of the fireplaces. It could be running from an oil tank at the back. You have absolutely no idea if it's not mentioned in the listing. But seeing radiators is always a really, really great thing. <laughs> oh, and the last thing actually about the inside of it when it comes to being habitable, not necessarily one of my absolute favourite things, but still I know a lot of you guys, it will take a huge expense off you. And that is the PVC windows and the front door. Now, like I said, they're not really my cup of tea. I would much prefer wooden windows. They last longer. They're just more expensive, to be honest. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't opt for them. But wooden windows are fantastic. Get them double glazed, get them triple glazed if you can afford it. But if not, like the best case scenario, of course, is going to be having double glazing or something already in the house. So when I saw the double glazing, especially on the doors and the windows, I just thought, look, it's good to have. It makes the house more habitable for you moving in. And for a house that's only 79,000, these are all big pluses. Now you're going to see why I really, really think this is a perfect house, aren't you? <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to the next section, which is land. 
So I'm not going to beat around the bush here at all. The listing says that there's five and a half acres of land behind and across the road from the house. Now that is a huge amount of land to have with a really, really big house for 79,000 euro. This is big stuff. I mean, you can see the pictures there that like this is a lot of land. The field behind the house is massive. Whatever amount of that land in front of the house is yours, I don't know because they haven't got it marked out, but it's definitely worth further inquiry for sure. So yeah, a huge amount of land, which is one of those things that makes this country life possible and it makes all these different options available to you when it comes to moving here. I just couldn't believe it when I saw five and a half acres and it just makes this place all the more special. So last but not least, does it tick the value box? Well, at a guide price of 79,000 for a house with five and a half acres of land, three bedrooms, a huge extension, this is really fantastic value. I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, you could move in here, do basic maintenance, basic decor stuff, and have a huge family home that you could grow into and live in for the next 20 or 30 years of your life. Now, if that isn't the perfect cheap Irish house, then I don't know what is. So as soon as I see another one of these, I'm going to come right back on and make another video and hopefully you guys are going to snag some great bargains and you're going to be one of those people that when everyone says, oh, you just can't find a house that's habitable for under 100k or oh, all them houses over on that Instagram feed, they're all just ruins, they're all just piles of stones in fields. Well, they're not. And this little series is out to prove that. And I just hope some of you guys can pick up some houses for under 100,000 that you can just move into and begin your new lives. Okay, until the next video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the little thumbs up button below because the more you guys that do that, the more I will make from these videos. And let's be honest about this. If I don't get paid something for them, I won't end up making them for very long. So support the channel, support the work that I do, and I'll make way more videos and you're just going to be a complete expert about buying your cheap Irish house by the time this lockdown's over. <laughs> Bye.